Hi everybody, welcome back at M2 Meets, which is Matthias and Melis, the Usobi Fellows for Social Media and Communication, are talking to stellar, outstanding speakers at this year Usobi conference. And next to me is the godfather, I can tell him, Dennis Libihan. But before asking you about your, your most important work, I want to let you know that I'm also a passionate amateur pianist. So what's your favorite piece you're just working on? Uh, Bach BW 543. Oh! Which is a prelude in fugue in the five, a, a minor. In 543. Five, ah, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I'm currently working on the F sharp minor fugue of the second tom, which is super. I play it too. It's, yeah, it's very, very moving. moving. It's very moving. Three different topics, so this is super. So we, we, are con we are connected, obviously, and I, I really like that you are also a musician by heart. But we will talk a little bit about diffusion rated imaging and how the diffusion rated international group of the USOB came to work. So let us know. Well, diffusion, <coughs> sorry. diffusion MRI has been used uh, for quite a while now, uh, everywhere in the body. And uh, in the prostate, it's, it's very uh, conventional to use yeah, it. Yeah, no one asks about it. But no, but in the breast, it's not the case. Yeah. As uh, in the in the breast, uh, contrast agents are still heavily used. And uh, so, um, with a, a few colleagues, uh, where we met at the, uh, uh, in Vienna for the ECR, I think it was five years ago. Yes, I remember. Yes, yeah, so about we had we had about thirty colleagues mm -hmm. from all the world, from Europe, of course, mm -hmm. United States, uh, Asia, Japan, and we discussed the issues. Why is diffusion MRI not so much used mm -hmm. in the breast? And uh, we decided to address the question and to, to write an article, in fact, uh, with guidelines. Maybe people were a little bit puzzled, but why shall I use it? How shall I use it? What shall I do? There are many questions for clinicians, so we um, we decided to work together to have a survey about how people were doing diffusion MRI in the breast, and then to produce guidelines, uh, which sequence, which p-value, which call, how shall I analyze the data, and this was published uh, uh, in, the, in the European Journal uh, just uh, two years later. So that's, that was the idea. And we are now uh, splitting the task in three subgroups. Uh, One uh, addressing really clinical questions for basic diffusion MRI. Another group uh, dedicated to advanced diffusion MRI, such as non gaussian diffusion to characterize tissues, IVIM to evaluate the perfusion in tumors, for instance, and DTI. Uh, for the anisotropy, if there is anisotropy in the breast. And the other group, very important, is about quality control and standardization. Because we realize that uh, the reason maybe why diffusion MRI is not so much used is that if you look at the literature, you find that there is a lot of viability in ADC values exactly. and so on. And this doesn't mean the technique doesn't work. Some people interpret that, yeah. that way. It means that people are using completely different protocols. It's like, it's like, it's like, and I will wrap up with this because we could all talk for hours. It's like playing Bach, right? If you if you fool around, it's your fingering which is wrong or a technique. But don't blame poor old John no, Sebastian no, Bach. No. So every one of you who have not read this paper, and I know there are many, please read this paper because it answers a lot of questions. Obviously, Dennis already mentioned it's a work in progress. So I'm really excited to cover your project, your baby, in the course of the next years. Thank you very much for joining. Make sure to follow our channels, leave a like, ask questions. We're going to forward it to Denis Lebihan, the godfather of diffusion-weighted imaging. And bye now for this time. Have a good one.